we won some games in 2019, but we didn't, um, you know, but we didn't win a, a Big Ten championship or beat Ohio State. And I think, you know, when I think of those who say we'll be champions, I just think of how far, you know, this program has come in the last two years, um, especially following last season, what a disappointment that was. And, um, you know, it feels good that, you know, we can say that phrase with confidence now. All right, welcome in on this Monday. Dennis Fithian here on Michigan Football Live. When I step on the scene. It's great to be with you. The Maze and Blue Review. We're here weekdays at 1 o'clock. We're a part of Rivals.com talking about the latest in Michigan sports. And that right there is Michigan quarterback Kate McNamara. And uh, he likes to use that phrase, those who stay will be champions. And I'm sure that they have used that phrase uh, quite often. Uh, this off season hadn't been able to use it in a few years. Uh, they certainly can uh, use it now, and that is good for the maize and blue. Speaking of Kate McNamara, we're going to be talking about uh, him today. And just if uh, Michigan, with number twelve at the helm, can can do it again, we know they did it last year. Uh, work through a little bit of that. What we liked, what we didn't like, the upside, the best throws. We'll watch some of those concerns, negatives, positives. Uh, we'll we'll just throw it out there. We'll see where you're at with it. When I say we'll see where you're at, if you are out there watching this live, you can uh, always comment in. And as the comments come in, I like to read those off. Uh, if you're watching this or listening to it after the fact, uh, you always know at one o'clock. If you want to get in, get your thoughts in uh, in real time, you can do that. You can also leave me a message uh, in a variety of places. Twitter's uh, uh, very easy. The direct message um, option is open on my Twitter page and you can see it right here uh, at Dennis Fithian. So we've got that going and we are going to talk about uh, Cade McNamara today. Hope you're having a great one. Before we go any further, let's uh, tell you about our new sponsor that we brought in last week. Hey folks, Dennis Fithian in support for the Maze and Blue Review is brought to you by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Manscaped's performance package, the ultimate men's hygiene bundle. Join me and over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. 20% 20% off and free worldwide shipping with the code TMBR at manscaped.com. And if you've ever heard the term and if someone asks if the curtains match the rug, well, in this broadcaster's case, I can tell you, yes, they do. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code TMBR at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Don't forget, use the code TMBR unlock your confidence, and always use the right tools for the job with Manscaped. That's right. All right, so let's get in and talk a little bit about uh, Cade McNamara. And you know, you, you, to talk about Cade McNamara, you, you think about the first time that you saw him and, and that uh, you were impressed, maybe not impressed. And, you know, that goes back to the previous year, the, the pandemic season, when he went in uh, in, in the Rutgers game uh, for Joe Milton, and he led Michigan on a on a big time comeback, and you know, U of M won that game. You know, four or five touchdowns. Uh, he was uh, he was the man. The only thing you could say, as uh, I guess you'd say it as a negative, you'd say, well, it was against Rutgers, but it was on the road against the Big Ten team, and it's not like that year that Michigan was sitting back, you know, taking anybody for granted, considering they lost all their games with the exception of that one and the opener uh, at Minnesota. So uh, Cade showed up. And uh, was really uh, showed, uh, I don't know, his guts, showed uh, showed the ability to spread the ball around, came in in a tough spot, and and showed that he's got something. Whatever you want to put, you know, and label it as moxie or uh, moxie, not a bad one. Uh, when you're thinking about uh, when you saw McNamara in that in that first game, now against Rutgers last year, when you look overall at uh, his numbers, talking about Cade 327 attempts, that's pretty low, very good completion percentage at 64%, 
you know, the 2,576 yards. He uh, had a touchdown to interception ratio of 15 to six. Now he didn't throw the ball a whole lot. And, and that's the thing you go back and you just think about uh, the Western game. You know, there were a lot of big plays and he was fine there, but against Washington, that was a total ground and pound. And if Michigan uh, did not have success early on in the second half there, and there already was kind of a little bit of uh, uh, say groaning, but there's a little bit of moaning to, to go along with it saying, look, Michigan just can't go out there and run the ball every single down. Even if, uh, you know, they had the success that they had against Washington on well, the following week, you know, they, uh, they, they had a, a, a big play, but they still, they scored touchdowns on their first nine drives and, and eight of them were rushing TDs. And then, you know, in the Rutgers game in the second half, that was a, that was the ugliest game of the year for Michigan and the second half and for Cade, uh, even though the year before at Rutgers, uh, his, you know, coming out party, he was pretty good. He wasn't in the second half. You may want to chalk it up to him getting his bell rung late in the first half against Rutgers, but I don't know. Uh, they weren't lucky to win, but that one was, um, that was a close game. They had to tough out and, you know, make some plays there at the end. You know, going back to that homecoming game that Michigan won against Rutgers uh, when they were up 20 to three at the half and uh, ended up hanging on for a 20 to 13 victory over the uh, the Scarlet Knights. But you you look at some of the other numbers for uh, for Cade and completion percentage. You mentioned that 64 percent is pretty good. Three guys that are coming back had better completion percentages in the Big Ten. Uh, Talia. Tunga Vailoa at Maryland, 69%. About Aiden O'Connell from uh, Purdue, 71.8% completion percentage. And old C.J. Stroud, an amazing 71.9% completion percentage uh, as a QB. Completion percentages have gone way up. Now you think about the, the short passing game, but when, when you're over – uh, certainly 65%, you are into some elite company. You look at those TD to interception ratios for some of the better QBs that are returning in the Big Ten. Cade, that 15 and 6. Uh, Purdue's on the schedule, 28 to uh, 8 for, for Clifford. Tunga Vailoa and O'Connell showing up on this page as well. Peyton Thorne, 27 TDs, 10 picks. And there's Stroud again. 44 touchdowns, six interceptions, and all of those wide receivers for Ohio State. You know, Kate McNamara, though, you think about what happened last year. Michigan, in their identity, was running the football. Uh, it was not, you know, you always say, oh, the quarterback's the most important player. You know, he's, he's worth more than, you know, four or five if you look at uh, the salary cap. And the um, uh, the numbers that the quarterbacks are getting, the franchise tag numbers of, you know, the quarterback, he's worth his weight in gold. And yet uh, Michigan, it was a uh, throwback. It was different. It was not, we're going to rely on our quarterback for everything. It was, we are going to rely on the running game. And that was apparent. Uh, they had the big plays mentioned uh, early on against Western, but it was pretty obvious against Washington, 56 carries, for 343 yards, uh, eight out of the nine uh, touchdowns they got in their in their third game uh, were via the ground. Uh, you go to the Wisconsin game; they they finally had a big play, and it was the one that it was uh, we're going to talk about. We'll show you coming up later the flea flicker to Cornelius Johnson. It was one of the big uh, plays in the game, but just as you go on, the one two punch of of Haskins in Blake Corum all the way through, you know, you have 19 for 119 yards and two scores, uh, Northwestern 23 for 110 and two, uh, for Haskins. Of course, Haskins had that, that hurdle, uh, against Nebraska and, and, and Corum had the run where he did the corn on the cob thing in, uh, in the Ohio state game. Uh, look at the numbers for the, uh, Ohio state game for Michigan. We're talking about um, uh, nearly 300 yards rushing and five scores there for Haskins. So, you know, Michigan will want to have that same kind of identity 
uh, this year. We have some uh, feedback coming in. This, uh, when I'm talking about the uh, touchdowns, interception, and completion percentage, uh, shall not be infringed, says easy to make 71% of your throws when you got wide open, wide receivers. Yeah, hey, uh, 71% is 71%. You got great wide receivers. You, you got great players all around you, whether you're great or not. I, you know, hey, uh, I'm just pointing out the numbers here. Uh, sure. You, you got first round talent all over the place running uh, free out there. Yeah, throw it up. They'll go get it. You look at Michigan's wide receivers, not too shabby with what they're bringing. Actually, better than what they had last year. Everybody uh, is back. You can, uh, you know, Dalen Baldwin, who did make some plays for Michigan, he's gone. But, you know, Ronnie Bell uh, expected back, who was Michigan's go to wide receiver heading into the year, and he got hurt against Western Michigan. Oh, as I look through and, and talk about Cade, I I posted on the den on the Maze and Blue Review what I thought was McNamara's best game. I selected Penn State worst game. I don't think there's any argument. It was Rutgers best throw. I put a couple. We'll show them. Uh, Kojo against Wisconsin. Andrew Anthony, the long touchdown against MSU, and then Roman Wilson, the first one against Penn State. I put. Um, Worst throw, the interception with a minute to go at Michigan State. You know, Michigan's one loss this year. For positives and negatives in the positive category, I put McNamara low turnovers. Now, he didn't take a lot of sacks, uh, so he now has that experience. Uh, he handles the quarterback competition uh, well, uh, as well as you can expect. And now he has um, a 21 Big Ten uh, championship you know, in his back pocket to make him feel pretty confident. And I think that helps when you're talking with the team, you know, you've been there before, you know, you had that experience. I, I think we can all agree on that. If there's a negative with McNamara, I put down the arm angle. He's had a few passes. I don't know, more than not, a, a couple more than maybe you'd want that are batted down at the line. And, and overall, like, I would like a quarterback to have, you know, perfect posture and a rocket arm and the ball, you know, comes out and it just spins and it's, you know, perfect. McNamara is not that. He's kind of got this, you know, slingshot and it kind of fires out of there. You know, you go through it. I think of, um, I think of Philip Rivers when he was at NC State. I remember him coming out. I was like, it's Philip Rivers. Is he going to be a good quarterback in the NFL? He's got this, like, you know, shot put type delivery. McNamara doesn't have that. They've worked with him a little bit on that. You know, if you've listened to uh, the different coaches on the offensive side of the ball, I think even Harbaugh has mentioned it, what they're working on when it comes down to that arm angle. So you want to put it as a negative something. You're like, not everything's positive. That is the one thing that uh, I looked at in the upside, and it's what I've been talking about here. He has not been the focal point of the offense. He certainly wasn't last year. And when you look at that Michigan schedule this year, starting out with Colorado State, Hawaii, and UConn and Maryland at home, those are four extremely winnable games, manageable games. However, the quarterback you know, rotation ends up working out in those games. Michigan should be 4-0, getting into October 1st, going to Iowa, and they've got Cade McNamara then at um, that point where he certainly can make enough plays for Michigan to be in the top five. Michigan's going to be in the top 10 to start the season. I would think that by the time they uh, head to Iowa, that they would be 4-0. Uh, if they're not going to be in the top five, they're knocking on the door. If they win the game at Iowa, I think they will be in the top five. And they really have a chance to be there all year long with a chance to make the college football playoffs again. And it, you, sometimes it sounds like it's a, a dream situation, certainly in some years past when you're talking about Michigan uh, making a college football playoff or, or, or winning the Big Ten or beating Ohio State. But, oh, yeah, you know, they did that. And, oh, yeah, they've got a lot of firepower coming back. And can, do they have a uh, legitimate shot? As we're sitting here talking on. May the 16th, 
you know very well if Michigan goes 11-0 and and they're marching down to Columbus on November 25th that there'll be a lot of people that think that Michigan will be able to go down there in Ohio State in a, a, a championship-type uh, atmosphere game, uh, one that could get them to the Big Ten championship game back-to-back that they'd have a uh, a, a chance, pretty good, I don't know, puncher's chance. They get a pretty good chance. Uh, and, and you'll, you know, as they pick up, wins along the way and focus in on that game. No, it'll be a tough one. It'll be a tough one. And, and then the whole schedule game that we uh, play, I think a real easy thing to say right now would be, you know, 10 and two is a very reasonable expectation for Michigan. It, it doesn't sound all of that bad, all that bad, except that, you know, 10 and two is likely not going to get you into that big 10 championship game. It depends who you lose to, but, Probably not. So you're not going to get back to that college football playoff. Is is ten and one sound like oh that's kind of above a, being kind of homerish? Maybe, but you're also talking about could Michigan go to Iowa and win that game? Probably be at night. I, yeah. Will they be favored in that game? Probably. Can they win it? Yeah. I mean, where else are they going to get tripped up? Well, at Michigan State maybe at home. Penn State at home, maybe. Whether well, you want to say it's a legitimate chance, uh, it's it's not crazy talk. It's not like in years past, uh, the, the last decade where we were sitting around, I think a lot of people would start rolling their eyes, maybe myself included. Like, okay, here we go again. I, I don't think it's an eye roll situation to talk about Michigan going uh, undefeated into Columbus. And, you know, Kate McNamara being a part of that, you know, here we are. Uh, so. I mentioned those uh, those big time throws. Let's go to the film. This is the one that broke the seal for me, and this was the the flea flicker uh, at Wisconsin. Now, up to this point, uh, you got Western, you had Washington, you had Northern Illinois, and then the you know the escape game against Rutgers, where they held on in the second half. They have to go to Wisconsin, who wasn't playing all that well. But you wondered if Michigan, you know, they end up knocking out the Badgers quarterback. But this was Mertz, you know, in the third quarter. But this was the play, and this is one of the uh, the best throws all year long, this uh, flea flicker to Cornelius Johnson. Let's see here. You run it. There's Cade. Gets it back. He's got all all day to throw the ball and puts it right on the money to Kojo for the touchdown. Now, the the second one that I thought was his best uh, throw was against Michigan State early in the game. Andrell Anthony, he shoots this one over the middle, puts it right on his money. It's, right on the money. This is about as good as a, a throw deep in your own end that you can make. It's a, a lightning bolt. Boom. You got to put that one on the money. You know, those are kind of passes that could get picked off. You're in trouble. Anthony takes it the distance. 93 yards. Great throw. A uh, great run after the catch, obviously, from uh, from Anthony. But um, uh, pretty good. This is one of my favorites. It doesn't get talked about a lot, but this was uh, against Penn State. I'll go to it here. And the first one to Roman Wilson. Roman Wilson caught a short touchdown pass. He also caught this particular one. That uh, if I'm going to look for a favorite, I'm going to put this one down. Even though it wasn't a game-winning play or anything else, I just he sticks this ball right in there from the the 20. Back to Murray. he's locked onto him, but he just you know he sees the safety. He's got the the matchup there, and well, let's just go back and watch that one again. I mean, this is a this is a hell of a throw. You get this one in here, boom. Right in there. It looks easy when you're throwing the ball like that. That was a nice throw. And then it was pointed out on the Wolverine Den when I was making those uh, three touchdowns that I like. Somebody mentioned the Ohio State game and the throw late in the first half to Cornelius Johnson. And this is another one. You have the time. You've got the running game. And he just puts this one right on the money to Kojo. Let's uh, cue that one up. Here we go. Ohio State game, fires it. Nice. Got all the time in the world, just lays it out there for for Kojo. 
And there it is. Touchdown. That put Michigan ahead, 419. Uh, we've got this uh, this throw in the uh, – this is a bonus coverage. A little one-handed by Schoonmaker to get it down to the half-yard line. But you forget maybe because everything was going so well in that Big Ten title game. McNamara was uh, dealing. There's a nice little throw there. The Schoonmaker again. No, that's all. That's all. Yeah, so there you are. And there are the throws that we're talking about right there with with Cade. So I like the situation at quarterback. How can you not for U of M? A word about, you know, like uh, Maze and Blue fighting back and forth about, well, with McCarthy, it's only going to be a matter of time. And, you know, like this backbiting, and then you get Michigan fans who are stepping up like, we've got our quarterback. He won the Big Ten this year, you know, and, and the arguing that goes back and forth. Um, it's fine. I think it's fine. I, I think it's fine if you're a McNamara fan, uh, you enjoyed the year, and you're like, look, it's it's, it's his job to lose. He's going to be the starter. You know, stop all this with McCarthy. I get that side. I understand it. I also understand the side with McCarthy in I guess I'm going to play the uh, I've been around the block a few times card now. Here it is. Here's one thing in sports that is guaranteed for as long as you are alive and you will know this, that the backup quarterback is the most popular player on any team. On any team that I've ever seen, the most popular quarterback is the backup quarterback. Uh, Fans always love him. Meanwhile, college football fans and Michigan fans in particular Love recruiting. They always are wanting to know, you know, the Michigan's in on a five-star. Could they possibly? Well, J.J. McCarthy is a five-star. He is exactly what recruiting fans dream of. The most important position, a five-star in spades, and a commitment, and maize and blue through and through, and, and you got one. What do you expect fans to say? And especially when you've seen, I'd say, tantalizing from McCarthy, you know, the first game where he had the throwback Patrick Mahomes thing, you know, the Dalen Baldwin who took it down. I mean, that was an unbelievable throw. Not every throw that he made was unbelievable. Uh, you know, you, you saw some of that inexperience. You, you, you saw that he needs to deliver at times more touch on the ball, but, you know, the, the rocket ability, the escapability, oh, we did see that from uh, from J.J. McCarthy. It was interesting because I was asking, I, I put all of my points up there about best throw, best game, you know, worst throw, all those sort of things. And in a, in a Den poster was making the point that he thought Michigan State may have been McNamara's best game. And you, you, okay, you can make the case for that. You know, he, uh, he made a lot of throws and a couple touchdown throws. And there's, and here's the thing with McCarthy. They ended up, Losing that game, J.J. McCarthy had 12 snaps. You remember he was in on the one where there was a fumble, whether you want to say, you know, it was more on the running back or the quarterback. I look at it as a shared responsibility there. And, you know, ultimately he did have the ball and it was a turnover. And on that series before, when Michigan was down in the red zone, I would have liked to have seen, you know, Cade McNamara. He was a little bit too, I don't know, he was cautious with his throws. And then he got taken out on one of them where, you know, his, his margin of error, I would have liked to have seen if he could have, you know, pitched another one in there uh, to see if he'd have been able, to, been able to make the throw. And McCarthy ended up, I think, fumbling it and recovering it on his own and ended up, you know, being able to take it out of bounds for a, a uh, one-yard loss. The point in that is that you can make the case it might have been the Michigan State game and a loss, and yet 12 of those snaps, very important snaps. McCarthy did throw a touchdown. But you don't know what would have happened if if Cade and you know there was a, a report that he could have been down in the medical tent. He was banged up. They needed McCarthy. That all stuff. All that stuff could be true. I'm not really here to to argue that. My point is is that there were some valuable snaps that were taken away, and potentially he could have been out there. And if it wasn't for the rotation, maybe Michigan could have won that game. Certainly, uh, if we say make the case, you make the case for anything when there's 12 snaps and you did have a fumble in there and 
uh, and you don't know the outcome and it's all hypothetical, but um, here's the thing that I think about, you know, heading into this year, Michigan's got a lot of firepower on offense and their identity that led to led them to the spot that they were last year while Hassan Haskins, and there's a few other players that are not going to be there in the offense, the identity and the focal point will remain the same for Michigan. I expect this team to be a ground and pound and throw the ball uh, when you want or when necessary, obviously, but it, I think it's going to be a lot of uh, the offense, even though you have a new offensive coordinator gone is Josh Gaddis in is Matt Weiss and, you know, Sharon Moore co-offensive coordinator. However, they work together to come up with these game plans, but I'm expecting it to be a, a lot like, like, um, like last year. Let's get back to some more feedback here. People need to trust the coaches. This is coming in from SNBI. People need to trust the coaches. They are going to start the best quarterback. They see a lot more than we do. I do feel that JJ will be the future, and he will start when the coaches feel he's ready. Yeah, ultimately, ultimately, that's not bad advice. The part about trusting the coaches, I mean, we're fans, we're media. If we all just sit back and say, mm, well, let's just trust the coaches, you know, ultimately, uh, that's not bad advice, but uh, uh, you you can go back to the, the start of the Harbaugh regime and you could question whether he, even though we weren't in practice, even though we didn't know um, 99% of what Harbaugh and company knew, you can make the case that three out of his first four or four out of his first five decisions when it came down to quarterbacks, he botched. Now, maybe botch is a strong word. I, I think about, you know, playing O'Corn. I think about playing O'Corn against Michigan State at home when it was raining. I, you know, there's a, there, there were a few situations where I think, uh, hey, well, how, why not play that freshman on the road against Wisconsin? Oh, my God, you would never do that. You would never play a freshman on the road uh, at Wisconsin. You know, you, you're, you're asking for why would you ever suggest doing that? Well, that was the same year that Nick Saban played a true freshman to start the second half of the championship game. That was the same year that Dabo Sweeney was starting a true freshman over a senior quarterback. And, you know, they, they pushed into the, the new age. And, and I, you can make the case that, that they, they made the, the wrong mistake when it came down to, to Milt. They, they, they could have, have gone with McCaffrey. Oh, they could have gone with McNamara. They might have, you know, picked the the third best out of the uh, the bunch there. But we're going to all do that. We're going to second guess uh, the QBs. That, and like I say, I'm fine with it. You should. And you just know how it goes that the backup quarterback is a five-star and it's going to happen. And if you're old enough to be around here, uh, you know, this goes back even further than – than Brady and Henson, but you know, that one uh, gets talked about uh, for good reason uh, quite a bit as well. And for me, I, I think I do look to when Harbaugh was the Niners, was with the Niners and he had Alex Smith and he, they had drafted Kaepernick. They did not put Kaepernick out there right away. But as soon as uh, Alex Smith got hurt, he had a concussion. They put the rookie and Kaepernick out there, and Alex Smith was okay to come back in a couple weeks, and he never got back out there. They went to Kaepernick. And it doesn't mean that that Cade can't throw one bad pass and, you know, they're going to hook him and they're going to put McCarthy out there, but let's be real. Michigan has three, I'll say four games. I'll include the Maryland home game. Michigan has four games where they can do a variety of different things. Start one, sit one, start the second quarter, give him the you know full range, whatever it is. And and we'll know uh, who should be the starting quarterback with the bulk of the the uh uh QB snaps uh, at Iowa. 
I don't think they should get into a, a true rotation or even – I, I didn't really like how it was playing out last year. I know I like it. Some like it. Some could say this is new college football, and it did work for him last year. So Harbaugh does ultimately have that on his side, how uh, he was playing the QBs. But um, I, I would like to decide on one by October the 1st and then go with him. And then, you know, there's a chance that uh, you can always uh, go back to the other one. CJ wants to talk a little bit. CJ Wolverine O'Corn was only there because of injuries. Well, there were injuries, but you also had uh, freshmen on the roster that that Michigan could have gone with. True freshmen. And you can say, well, they were only true freshmen. They weren't ready to go. And I'll say, well, in other big time programs, they were put out there and they produced and they won championships. So I'll second guess that one. And uh, I, I know, you know, O'Corn uh, had a track re- record and everything else, but uh, I'll, I'll second guess that one. We can, we can always uh, debate that one and look at the QBs that were on the roster, but um, uh, I think Harbaugh made the wrong decisions uh, when it came down to the O'Corn start um, uh, against Ohio State at home, the O'Corn start against Michigan State. Uh, and he, he also had a chance to play one of those freshmen on the road at Wisconsin as well. I, I didn't like any of those uh, decisions there. But, hey, like I said, like um, I'm all right with what anybody says. If they just want to go with the coach and say, hey, look, the coach knows everything. You're just watching the game. What are you talking about? Uh, that's fair criticism uh, of me. Uh, all right. Can we do a, an entire week on Kate McNamara? Should I bring other people on and say, uh, I've just been giving my opinion of the QB. Ask other people like, hey, what do they think uh, when it comes down to Kate McNamara? Uh, maybe we'll continue with this theme. Uh, whatever else is going on with Michigan, uh, we will talk about. That's what we do here on uh, the Maze in Blue Review. And for that, I want to remind you to join us at the Maze in Blue Review today. Go to michigan.rivals.com. Father's Day coming up. Great Father's Day gift. Uh, any Michigan fan in your life, it makes for a great birthday gift. But you think if you're like, uh, you know, I don't know what to get my dad. Maybe I'll go with another maize and blue tie. Not bad. You know, I'll give another maize shirt. I'll give another, you know, set of golf balls. All fine choices. But how about you deliver the maize and blue review? And your dad's like, whoa, all Michigan talk all the time at michiganrivals.com? What a great gift. Thanks so much, son. Also, don't forget, uh, subscribe on YouTube. Uh, I've added another video there on TikTok, so you can check that out. All of that stuff uh, available for you. So uh, so check it out. And leave reviews. You, If you're somebody that just listens on the podcast, leave a review out there so I can uh, so I can track you and say thanks. And uh, it, it helps us, you know, bump to the front of the line and a lot of different things uh, when it comes to reviews and, you know, getting, you know, put up to the top of the line. So all that stuff helps if you're somebody that um, that listens, if you take the uh, the time to leave a review or whatever else, uh, it's appreciated. All right. Uh, I want everybody to have a great day. This I got the, the studio window open here for the weekend. I'm not going to complain about the heat. Because, uh, you know, I handled it. We got here. Touchdown. Oh, oh, that was the uh, that was the Donovan Edwards touchdown. Let's watch that one. Let's watch this Donovan Edwards touchdown in the Big Ten championship game. This wasn't too bad. This is where J.J. McCarthy catches up to Corum. But I think this is – here we go. We're going to get the TD. Oh, yeah. There it is. I want more of those kind of plays. That was a play. That's one of the great plays in one of the great plays in in Michigan history. Those two guys, Donovan Edwards. How about play Donovan Edwards at quarterback? That kid could throw the ball. Roman Wilson, underrated wide receiver. Comes up big, makes big plays in games. So there you go. Smash that like button. There you go, bud. All right. Again, have a great day.
Thanks for watching this broadcast today, and I'll talk with you tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Till then, 